Yeah, very good morning to you all. I think uh, from, right from the morning we heard uh, uh, CMD of Cochin Metro talk about the entire historical background as to how Cochin has been evolved as a city and as a port. And uh, Professor Gati Shakti, I mean, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Gati Shakti Vidyalaya delineating about Indian Railways and also as to what the role of training is. We have heard from MD DFC as to the role of the DFCs. Um, mm. Let me just tell you that my organization, Chris, Center for Rail Information Systems, is um, the IT backbone for the Indian Railway. Many of you, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have heard about Chris. Can I just have a show of hands? Yeah, it's hardly around 15%. So I think I'll take a bit more time to just um, explain as to what we do. Um, I, uh, Indian Railway itself doesn't need any introduction, I'm sure. I think it has been shown in many forums. I think you have heard from Professor Vyas, but let me just tell you so that you can actually place us to the work what we do in for Indian Railways. The railway, as you know, is the fourth largest rail network in the country. And as, as has been shown, 68,000 route kilometers, around 1,40,000 track kilometers, 22 million passengers carried every day, 4 billion of freight carried every day. And for carrying out this transportation output, we deploy almost around 3 lakh, 3 and a half lakh wagons, uh, around 80,000 coaches, employ, any guesses how many we employ? Yeah, around 1.3 million employees to carry out this massive transportation. Uh, but just uh, give a thought as to how this massive network, in fact, I told you it is the fourth largest network, but it is the single net largest network under an integrated management in the world. Nowhere in the, in the world is a rail system comparable to our extent is managed by a single management. And I would like you to just take a step back and see as to how is this system managed across the length and breadth of the country. Not very dissimilar to how you can find the air traffic control. I mean, you, you see the Indian airspace is around 3.9 million square kilometers and uh, multiple flights, international, domestic, so on and so forth, crisscrossing the country like your cross traffic. And um, all this is managed by four or five major air traffic control units in the country, wherein they have the airspace which is geographically demarcated and um, they control the movement of the flights in their geographical space. Similar to that, Indian Railway 2 manages its 68,000 route kilometers where we run around 10,000 passenger trains every day, around 8,000 freight trains every day through 16 administrative zones. In fact, these 16 administrative zones are further bifurcated into smaller divisions of say around 800 kilometers each, wherein there is a section controller similar to an air traffic controller who has, the con who has an absolute control over how the trains are run in the system. He has over a distance of say around 200 kilometers per controller, we will have say uh, typically around um, 25 stations and he has a continuous communication with each of these stations and determines whether a train has to move, whether it has to stop, when the tra for traffic planning has to be done in terms of downtime maintenance, so on and so forth. And all this was being carried, was being done manually maybe around 30 years back. There was a hierarchical system of information flow because Beraji has set the tone by saying, get into the history before you know where you are. I think I will take this opportunity because there used to be a information flow which originates from the division to the zone, to the railway, and it kept on flowing up and down. No computers, but on a manual system, wherein the network needs to be managed in terms of where the locomotives have to be balanced, where the wagons need to go. All this has to be managed through a very hierarchical and a tightly controlled administrative system, not very dissimilar to how the military runs. But military runs mostly in drills on, on in normal days and actuals on the ground. But railway runs 24 into 7, 
produces this transportation output. And now, come 1986, for the first time, digitization started on Indian Railway. And an organization called Center for Rail Information System has been formed. And for the better part of first two decades, these IT systems have been confined to two major applications, which probably many of you know the first. It is on the passenger reservation system. And the next was on the freight operating information system. Chris has been given a mandate to design, manage, develop, and also not only the ICT applications for Indian Railway, but also to procure and maintain the hardware and the networking equipment and the systems that are required. So with this mandate, we started in 1986, and it is what normal public sees is the railway interface and the TTs, the station masters, but what goes in the background is something which is really fascinating. I have no doubt that I have titled this as Indian Railways at Chris because all the backend applications are developed by our systems. In fact, we categorize our applications which currently run the Indian Railways into these six major categories. The first one, as I mentioned, in the first two decades, 1986 to 2006, it's almost like only two applications on the freight operating and the passenger reservation system. On the operations front, for the first time, operations were computerized somewhere in 2006 with the control charting application. I told you about how the controller interacts with the stations and operates through a continuous communication system. That was the same system even exists today. But how this data is captured into a control mechanism is what has changed over, over the years. Earlier, there used to be a time and distance chart. The distance chart used to represent the 30 odd stations. The controller communicates and, and says, say 14231, the Trivandrum Rajdhani, Ernakulam, in and out 2425, 824, 825. He used to actually get the timings and then plot it with a pen and pencil and a, and a scale. In 2006, this process was automated by the railways for the first time, in which this so-called drudgery, which we used to be there in terms of the big time and distance chart of six hours with blocks of 10 minutes each. The date and time started getting through an interface. It still he has to communicate, but it used to get an interface. But in the backend database, you had everything that is required in terms of the train operations, in terms of the train, its station, its date, its time, time in, time out. Everything was getting captured through this control of his application. And 10 years later, somewhere in 2016, this mode of data acquisition and the operations changed further. Train passed a signal. There's, it touches something called a track circuit at a starter and an advanced starter, and the timing is actually getting into a database. And now, as we, start, as we stand today, it is even further digitized and automated on a real-time basis. We have entered into a collaboration with ISRO, wherein this real-time information system is we have deployed on all our locomotives, real-time information gadgets, you may say, you know, I mean, which capture the GPS coordinates through satellites and automatically as the train passes, we have a continuous uh, in information about the running of the train. Earlier, it was only when the train touches the station that you knew and a line was drawn. So that has been the gradation. The same occurred in almost every application. I mean, you take the passenger reservation system. 1986, before that, you used to have a printed card ticket, isn't it? How many of you have seen actually a printed card reserve ticket? Oh, yeah. Most of us in the 50s <laughs> will probably will know that. But later in 1986, for the first time, railway came with a distributed data center architecture with Chennai, Calcutta, Mumbai, as well as in Delhi. And tickets used to be issued within the particular zone. That means you could take a ticket Say in Chennai zone, it had a geographical jurisdiction. Maybe in, in modern terms, you may call it in terms of Southern Railway, Southwestern Railway, South Central Railway, and so on. If you wanted to move, move from Trivandrum to, say, Bangalore, you could take a ticket from the Chennai DC. But if you want to take a ticket from Chennai and travel to Amritsar, you couldn't in 1986 when we started with the computerization. 
you actually had to give a message, wait for it, and then come back. Somewhere in 2019, I, I think around 2000 or so, this changed. All the DCs were interconnected through a mesh network, which is totally redundant, and uh, anywhere to anywhere ticketing came into place. And 2010, we opened up for web and mobile ticketing, and today as we stand, our modernization of the passenger reservation system, which currently is quite a staggering in terms of its throughput. Almost 15,000 tickets are booked per minute in our passenger reservation system today. And with our modernization, which is likely to be completed by 2024, December, we would be taking this capability to almost one and a half lakh tickets per minute. And not only the core public interfaces, but we also have our asset management system. In fact, um, Sir, uh, MD, uh, DFCCL is a hardcore civil engineer and he would acknowledge the fact that our track management system which evolved over the past few decades, actually it started uh, somewhere in 2009 and just like any other application in any of your organizations, today it is considered one of the best in the world. Even we had people visiting from Switzerland, they are small countries but to gather the master data of the assets, build in the periodical maintenance schedules, and then coming out with the arrears of maintenance, and as and when any repair and maintenance is undertaken, getting into a database and then still managing it holistically is something which uh, is a real marvel. And, uh, and how do you think we operate? Chris is an organization. We develop our own software applications. We don't engage any outsider. And for development of applications, of course, hardware and network are procured. We have around 900 plus software engineers. Now we recruit them through GATE. And um, they are really proud of the way in which things have evolved. Similarly, on the rolling stock also, on the coaching, uh, coaches, the wagon, the freight, and of course, the backbone of finance, HR, procurement and a lot of other front-end applications which keep uh, developing on the web. This evolution is actually both a strength and a weakness. And as we stand today, you know, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt. Uh, greatest strength is almost everything that needs to get into a database of every activity on Indian Railway is 90 to 95% captured and gets into a database. So that is the strength in which the data is almost captured in every field for you to intervene for day-to-day -day operations, for your medium-term planning, and for long-term planning. But there is a great weakness too in this, because the way in which the applications evolved, they have, we are, no one has actually thought in the beginning as some sort of an enterprise resource planning, and then to do this holistic um, planning as organizations currently do. But herein lies the weakness in terms of each of these applications have been developed in different eras on different application software in different operating systems in different hardware, sometimes even hardware wedded to the software and integrating them through enterprise service buses, APIs. This is what we are currently doing. And um, this is on the application front. But um, we have a lot of uh, challenges that we need to face because of this evolution. The master data management. I mean, uh, because each of these applications has to be looked at from the various master, masters which are used and listed. I mean, definitely I don't expect you to know any of these acronyms. I'm just trying to get into the general principles which probably would be relevant to almost every organization which has evolved over the last four or five decades. These are things which are faced. So don't compare us with, say, how you evolve uh, say a metro like a DMRC or a Cochin metro and say your state of art. We are the best in Indian railways it, because we, we still evolve. Even you look at our technology, I mean, uh, 1825 when the train started, stock, uh, stock, uh, Stockton to Darlington, when the first coal railway line was laid, 1853 we started, steam evolved to diesel, diesel evolved to electric and electric evolved to I don't know, my friend is there in electrical, he'll tell you how evil electrics evolve themselves from DC to DC, from DC to AC, DC to AC to induction to three-phase now. 
I mean, uh, and railway evolves. You can't change it overnight. But similarly, on the signaling side, uh, I'm sure many of our older ones would have seen the upper quadrant, lower quadrant signals going into multiple aspect color interlocking, uh, color light signaling into now what we call as solid state interlocking. Now, if a metro is coming with a solid state interlocking, 68,000 root kilometers has to be changed <laughs> over a time. I mean, it, and, you, and it has to be done in running traffic and operating conditions. So the challenge is how fast you do it. How do you manage your projects in terms of you know, changing? So never make a mistake of comparing a brownfield, small, organi uh, large organization and a change that ne needs to be required with a greenfield organization with a state of art. There is a lot of going on there as well. And... Um, this is one thing which probably every organization faces and the decisions that need to be taken, as I mentioned, the modernization, I'll skip this slide. This is about uh, the train tracking, which we are doing with ISRO, which I'm really proud of. And this is something which um, I would like probably each one of you to uh, give a thought because how the data is acquired, all those applications which I, told, which I showed you, there are around uh, 230 applications which currently run the rail system on a daily basis. And this data was acquired originally through manual systems. Someone used to key in, as I mentioned, both in the passenger reservation system as well as in uh, your um, control charting application coming from a time and distance chart with a scale to how it was data logger and coming through this. The data acquisition systems are currently changing rapidly. I mean, uh, now, as we speak, uh, railway themselves, I mean, uh, because uh, we are handling it, uh, there is an RFID project which is going on. Already 28 have been installed uh, with observation monitoring systems at different locations for the wheel to rail and wheel interactions to be captured. And uh, this is going to be proliferated across the entire country shortly. All our three and a half lakh wagons will be fitted with GPS trackers and the RFP is likely to be issued as per the target by December 15th. We are, we are likely to issue that RFP. And uh, CCTVs on locomotives and coaches. This is something uh, along with the driver alert system. In fact, a very ambitious target has been set by a minister to do it in 120 days on 15,000 locomotives and on all our 80,000 coaches. So we are at it. Now, the issue that needs to be addressed now is with all these multiple sensors coming in, and of course, the locomotive themselves, it is a bundle of uh, information which is streams online. Every subsystem system, the current voltages are tracked and gets into a database and goes into the OEM server in which they, they actually do some predictive maintenance in, um, on top of this information which is collected. Uh, as a railway, as a single network, and I'm sure it would resonate with many of you here who are in the IT sector here, that how, what is the backend data, archite data architecture, network architecture, and the server and the cloud architecture you would, you would like to build to capture, capture this, and how do you integrate this information into your legacy database applications which you are currently running? This is something which, uh, which, needs, to be, which needs to be seen. And each one comes in its own flavor, but that is where collaboration and uh, partnerships are required. We are just uh, expanding ourselves in terms of reaching out to both the academy on one side. We have engaged, uh, I mean, uh, one of my gurus, uh, Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy, as an IIT uh, professor in network and uh, in networks. We have engaged Professor Vyas for developing some digital twin for us, who is sitting here. Uh, from IIT Kanpur uh, to see that we take these initiatives at a rapid pace. Similarly, sensors everywhere, water sensors. These are, these are coming where you actually track as to what is the level of water in each coach and uh, this has already been tried out as a pilot. CCTVs already, uh, as I mentioned, not only on the locomotives and the coaches, but also at the stations. Um, this is where 3,000 Cameras have already been fitted on the core suburban sector between Churchgate to Virar, wherein um, apart from the normal surveillance, it also has a lot of inbuilt capabilities of facial recognition system, people count, 
and something ambitious in terms of a use case to alert in Mumbai suburban, depending upon the density of people who are in a coach. Most of the trains originate from Churchgate, for example. And you take the inventory balance of each coach as zero. Anyone comes in, the camera detects how many people are getting into which coach. And at every stopping station, how many are getting out. So as the train runs, you get a continuous inventory of which coach has how many. And uh, these are some of the interesting things which uh, are being carried out, especially in terms of um, safety also is an important thing. And many of you must uh, be remembering in 2016, there was that Elphinstone bridge collapse, you know, basically because of people crowding. So here, this system in Mumbai suburban and the Western would actually tell you through your AI analytics which asset is stressed. We have built threshold for every staircase, every platform, every FOB in terms of how much would be the load and based on the people counts, a threshold and an alert goes to the concern. Signaling system. I mean, I don't want to take much time. I think uh, uh, one more uh, theme, I just want to leave it with you. This is again, uh, as I mentioned, not only track signals, the points block track circuits are being tracked and now and a program is going in wherein predictive maintenance is going to be the mantra now instead of uh, periodic maintenance but tracking and seeing that a failure is predicted and action taken before it actually happens. Already it is on a rollout on 30 stations on IR and the remaining will be proliferated once the system stabilizes. Digital twin I talked about, we are trying it. But last but not the least is on the IT front is on the cyber security. I mean, um, we are prone or we can say that average we receive around 800 attacks every day on our system and um, attacks are becoming much more rapid over the last uh, few months. And I, I can tell you, uh, there are some things happening which probably we are not able to even track even with the best of institutions what we currently have in the country. And um, threats are on the application front, identity access, uh, they are on the hardware and systems, they are on the network, they are at the endpoints. And here, we just wanted to plot what we in Indian Railway have as tools to prevent these. And what do we don't, uh, what is it that we don't have? So here in green are shown the tools what are currently available. I think there is something which is missing. These are all names which are supposed to be there, maybe some version. It's not reflecting there, but green are the tools across each of these. Blue are the ones where we have, but not full functionalities. Yellow are the tools which we are procuring through a major project called IRSOC, Indian Railway Security Operations Center, where, um, and red is probably, we don't require them, many of them in these uh, cells currently. And uh, this is something which we need to look at it in terms of uh, mastering, and I'm sure, um, Gati Shakti Vidyalaya would be taking this also as a subject because this is going to be one of the core determiners and just now uh, a call came for me I mean I just went out it was from my passenger reservation GM <laughs> stating that NGET has slowed down NGET is the new generation ticketing on the mobile and the web and normally we book so we just wanted to see the sensitivity of it uh, these threats are becoming uh, very very frequent and something which we need to guard against. But having said that, we run our systems using around 13,000 cores with around 1,200 servers spread over uh, the entire Indian Railway. And the network is also undergoing a rapid change. We are now, we have our own private cloud, wherein out of 230 applications, we moved around 50 applications and we are moving the remaining. And we will probably be going into a hybrid cloud for the data analytics part of it. And this is uh, our overall schematic in terms of what we intend to do. These are all applications which you can see in a discrete form. We are actually trying to get them into an enterprise uh, data lake uh, project. And then on top of that, build analytics and uh, other things. And analytics, I would have actually loved to show you some of these which we are currently doing. But uh, I think I will reserve it for some other time then. Uh, but last but not the least, we in Chris, uh, we, we fully acknowledge that uh, we are the backbone for the Indian Railway. 
and the railway's goals are our goals. In fact, uh, the strategic goals which uh, Niti Aayog set for the railways, like uh, you should become a 5 trillion USD economy for the country uh, by 2030, and what should be the 41 sectors uh, of the economy and what should be their goals. Railway is one amongst the sector, wherein we are expected to take a market share from 26% to 50%, go from 1,500 million tons to 3,000 million tons, as asset reliability to be 100%, punctuality to be 99%, you know, so on and so forth. And amongst each of these sectors, we see Chris as a role, as an enabler to the railways in terms of delivering these goals through the functions of marketing and business development, capacity expansion and development works in terms of getting the project management tools in place, fixing our accountability in the back end, and uh, uh, in ensuring that uh, the asset reliability and also the rationalization of practices. So um, this in brief is what we do in CRIS. These are exciting times for um, all of us because the technology is evolving so rapidly. And um, just now we came out with an expression of interest on December 6th, we would be having um, these people who would be coming to us to see how we can leverage on generative AI and um, artificial general intelligence because what we are seeing is there is a threat that this all these 900 software application developers what we currently have. Once the application is developed, a lot of code is written in terms of the queries, in terms of building models, predictive models, analytic models, OR research. And what we are seeing in the last few months with this AGI and generative models is you just plug in your data applications to this databases. You give access to the generative uh, AI platforms. That's it. You just type in a small question stating that show my crew performance in a particular depot or whatever it is. You just type it out. It does its own uh, analytics in terms of finding out what is the transaction table, what is the master table, which is an output, what is an, what are the inputs, to what extent each input uh, has an impact on the output. So uh, these are things which uh, we want to adopt and use an open source tool as well as to also leverage on what is the state of art currently in the market at a, at a reasonable price. And um, I'm sure we are heading for something wonderful in the coming times. Thank you very much.